Hey everybody, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art, and today I'm going to show you how to apply watercolor paper to a board. It can be watercolor paper that is already painted on, has a painting done. It could be just unpainted watercolor paper that you want to apply to the board before you start to work on it, and it can be any type of board, really. Here is one that I've already done. Let's see, I applied this painting after it was finished onto a cradled board because um, I like doing this instead of framing behind glass. It makes it just easier to hang. It's less expensive than framing. There's nothing coming between you and the art. Um, and then after I apply it to protect the painting, I wax it, which sounds crazy. But this piece has been waxed. Um, I love the very slight lustrous finish it gives to the work. It still looks like watercolor and it is less likely to fade with wax on it. I wax the top and I wax the sides. So this is a piece that I've already done this framing method with and um, I'd like to share with you how to do it because I think it's great. So all the supplies you're gonna need are right here. I believe I have them all. You're gonna need sandpaper. I use a sandpaper, it's a fairly fine grit. You'll need gesso. This is Liquitex gesso that I found in my basement. A paintbrush to put the gesso on with. A big palette knife. If you don't have a, a large palette knife, I've used um, a spatula before, whatever works. Or you could use a stiff brush. Uh, gel mat. Uh, this is golden heavy gel mat. That's going to be for your glue to apply the paper to the board. And um, it's really, really thick stuff, but it works really, really well. You're going to need a brayer, an X Acto knife with a new blade. And then for the waxing part, oh, I'm the next thing you would need is not necessarily a skillet, but this is what I use to weigh the, the work down when I'm waiting for the, the, uh, the glue to dry and the painting to adhere to the surface. I weigh it down with cast iron skillets and, and cans. So that's why I have the skillet out here. You're going to need something to, to put on the back of the board when you're adhering the painting to it. You could use books, anything like that. All right. Now, for when you wax the painting, this is the type of wax I use. It's called Dorland's Wax Medium. It won't harm your painting. It's all natural. It smells good. Um, it's really just a very nice product. And you're also going to need some lint-free cloths to apply the wax and to rub it off with. These are just old dishcloths that I've washed about a thousand times, so they're, they don't have much lint on them. All right, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need, of course, is the board that you're gonna adhere the paper to. This is a two inch deep cradle board. Um, I buy my boards generally from Rexart because they make custom sizes. They're not outrageously expensive and they're good quality boards, but you can get uh, boards from so many different sources, from Cheap Joe's, from Amazon, Ampersand makes them. Uh, this is just what I use because I need custom sizes generally for my paintings. This has not been finished in any way. It is just the wood. So I'm gonna need to prepare it for the painting. First thing, take my sandpaper. I'm just gonna lightly sand it, uh, remove any splinters, make sure it's very smooth. There are just a couple little fuzzy splinters on the edges, nothing terrible but I just want to make sure all that is gone before I start to put my paper on. Now that my board is sanded, I'm going to take a cloth. I just use a paper towel. It's a, just a teeny, teeny bit damp, or you could use a tack cloth or something just to wipe it off and make sure the, the sawdust is, is gone and isn't going to be attached in the glue or in any part of my wood. 
and I also want to make sure I clean off my work surface again. Now that my board is prepared and it's been sanded and cleaned, I'm going to apply the gesso. I guess you could just put on the matte medium and I hope that that's going to protect your painting from the acid in the wood. It probably will, but I like to put a layer of gesso on just to be sure it's going to seal the wood and make sure that the, the uh, wood acid does not seep into the paper over time. And I just sort of glop it on and then spread it out. Okay, it's a thin layer of gesso. I've made it as smooth as I possibly can. Now I'm just going to let it dry. You can let it dry by air. I like to use a hair dryer sometimes. Just make, it full, make sure that it's fully dry before we go to the next step. Now that the gesso is dried, I'm gonna give it another light sanding just to smooth out any imperfections. You can see I've got some bumps here where I checked to see if it was dry and it wasn't yet and it left some, some extra paint. So just give it a nice little sanding. So I finished sanding. I've got a lot of gesso dust and I need to wipe that off with my damp paper towel again. I'm also gonna wash my hands because I don't wanna get any of this gesso on my actual painting when I start uh, getting ready to apply it to the board. The next step is to apply your uh, gel matte medium, matte gel medium, I never know how to say this. For that, I use my palette knife and I'm gonna get a nice uh, thin coat that covers the entire piece. I want to work rather quickly because it dries quickly. And I also want to go ahead and have my, my painting or my paper handy to put on here as soon as I'm done. So let's go. You see, I just get out a glop. Now I'm going to start spreading it around. It's a little bit like icing a cake. Okay, I've covered the whole thing with the matte medium. Be especially sure that you get it on the corners and on the edges. Uh, those are the places you really don't want your painting to, to come loose at all. This is the painting that I'm going to put on my board. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, move this out of the way. Make sure my surface is clean. Flip this over. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna flip over. See, is this lining up the way I want it to? Actually, no. So it's easy to slide. While the gesso's wet and place where you want it, is this where I want it? Yes, I believe so. Okay, put it back over, press it down. Turn it back over. Oh, and I wanted to show you, I have not trimmed this painting already. You can trim it and then put it on here. I prefer to leave mine with an edge and I'm gonna trim that edge off after the gesso dries. But it's up to you. You can go ahead and trim your painting to the size of your board before you do this as well. I'm gonna take my brayer. 
and make sure that that painting is adhering to the board. I try to work from the middle out. So any of the gesso that smushes out comes out the sides and don't press down too hard. You don't want to smush out all of your gesso. All right. I'm gonna now flip it over. I'll weight it down with my frying pan, my cans, my books, whatever, and let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna go set this somewhere and let it dry. And here's a photo showing um, my drying setup overnight. I basically took a lot of kitchen stuff, laid it on the back on my dining room table, and let the painting sit overnight to make sure it dried. Here is the painting that I applied to a board yesterday and it's been drying all night. See, it's on there very, very firmly. It's not going anywhere, all right? And I've left the extra edges. Okay. Uh, the thing I wanna do now is I'm gonna trim these edges with my X-Acto knife. That's why you want a really sharp blade. You're gonna go right along the edge of the, the wood frame here and uh, just do a careful job it'll be fine. I have a small cutting board I like to put under here. I don't have a really big one, so I have to just move it as I go, but it works. Okay. Okay. First piece is off. It doesn't have to be exact. You're gonna come in and fix any edges later. All right, very exciting. And we can flip it over. Ta-da! I love how it looks. Oh my gosh. So, the next step is just I get my sandpaper again, and I'm gonna sand the edges of the watercolor paper just to get rid of any little bits of gesso that squeezed out, any rough places. I've got a couple little spots here. I'm not going to sand going up ever. I'm gonna sand very gently down the side of the work. It's gonna give it a nice smooth finish on the edge. It's not gonna hurt your painting. satisfied with that. Anytime you have a little too much hanging over the edge, you can always go back, back in with your X-Acto and um, trim that off and then sand a little more. Uh, you could also, before you put it on, paint the edges. Some people like to paint the edges black. Um, I like to keep them natural myself and then I wax them. Um, but this is how it looks once it's applied to the board and before it's been waxed. Um, you can see it's a really clean presentation. It's really sharp, a little more modern looking. Now I'm gonna clean up my dust and I'll show you how to wax the painting. I'm gonna make sure the surface of my painting is really clean. No little flecks of dust. I don't wanna paint anything else on it. All my masking fluid is up. Look, there's a little masking fluid that didn't come up. 
Whew, glad I saw that. There is nothing I want to change because once you put this um, wax on here, it's done. You can't do anything to it. Okay, now see, I see where I took this masking fluid off. It's left a little bit of a hard line. I, um, I can't believe actually that I, I missed that before. So before I put my wax on, I'm gonna come back in with my paints. I'm gonna fix those little spots, let it dry, then come back in with my wax. Now it's time for the big moment. We're gonna put on our wax medium. It's uh, just very nice wax. You don't need a lot. The secret is to put it on thin, 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 thin. This is where I've messed up so many times. I get impatient. I put it on a little too thickly. Um, you can put on multiple coats. So put on a thin coat, let it dry, then you buff it. And for drying, it takes several hours. If it feels the least, least bit tacky, like you even think this might be a little tacky here, wait another hour before you go to buff it. You're gonna, so it's just like waxing your car. Wax on, wax off. Let me show you. A little on my cloth. Here I go. Ah! Moving a circular motion. I'm making sure I'm getting it in all the little divots and marks of my watercolor paper. make sure I'm covering the whole thing I'll have to get down and look at it from an angle in the light and you can see places that you might have missed now I'm going to look at it from all angles to make sure I've covered the whole thing with just a super thin layer of wax looks like the top is done. I also wax the sides. I really got too much wax there. I don't know what I was thinking. There you go, my first coat of wax. I usually put two, maybe three coats of wax on my pieces. I let it dry, I buff it, I let it dry, and I buff it. Um, if you continue to put wax on and buff, you can apparently buff it to a glossy finish. I don't want a glossy finish on my watercolors. I just want them to be, to be protected. I still want it to look like watercolor, which it will. Um, I think the one change you might notice in the painting is that maybe the colors are slightly more intense. It's brought out a little more of the, the color in the painting, which I love. I, I think that's a great thing, uh, but it's something to consider if you don't want that to happen to your paintings. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. Then I'm gonna show you how I, I buff it. Actually, I'm gonna show you with the other painting that I've already done. So let's put this to the side. Here's my painting that I finished. As you can see, um, it, it has two coats of wax on it and I've already buffed it. Just to show you for the sake of showing how, how to buff it once the wax is dry. It's just like your car. You're just gonna move in a circular motion. Until you get the type of finish you want and it can be a totally matte finish this is pretty matte maybe a teeny 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 bit of, of like a luminous texture to it if that makes sense um, I, I like that finish I think it looks it looks great but it still looks like a watercolor it doesn't look like it's got um, epoxy over it or anything it just is protected on the top and since I wax the sides, it's protected on the sides as well. So, 
I hope you've enjoyed learning about this and I hope that you'll try it with some of your paintings. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to bulk up on some subscribers. I'm trying to put out a new watercolor video every week or two. Uh, I think I'm gonna be focusing more on how-to videos from now on out. So if you have anything you'd like to learn how to do, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.